I am a huge fan of Kenneth Graham's. I love his short stories that are put together in books like Golden Days. Obviously, I love one of his most famous stories, The Wind in the Willows. And I had grown up having a lot of those stories told to me. So The Reluctant Dragon was one that always just kind of sat in the back of my mind. There's a lot of great dragon stories that are being created now, but this was one that I felt, I guess I just didn't want kids to forget it or not even know about it. I thought it would be really cool to be able to take kind of the spirit of the theme that he put in his story that he wrote back in the 1800s and try to not really modernize it, but make it maybe a little more applicable to the child of today, the reader of today. When you read a book like that, that you've grown up with, I think you probably look into it and try to find themes that feel right in your life. And for me, I think the biggest one was that the dragon is viewed as an outcast. He's viewed as an outsider. And I think oftentimes, I know I have felt that way. I think probably because I had my head in the clouds and I like to draw and do things like that and not necessarily the things that a lot of other kids did on a regular basis. That part kind of appealed to me. And I really wanted to be able to take the aspect that we kind of make quick snap judgments when we look at someone or something and we don't really get a chance to get to know someone. And I wanted to be able to try to weave that kind of idea in there. But it's gently done. I, I would never want to get on a soapbox and pound some kind of moral message into a book. It's really just, how could I tell a cool story with a dragon in it <laughs> that kids might like? I think I actually was able to figure out a way to kind of reapproach a creature like this doing the, the Spiderwick Chronicles books because those were so much about like taking goblins and fairies and trolls and trying to make them something that kids would be into. So I kind of had that mentality going in with this story. And I think really what helped me go down the path of how he looked, and he's kind of hairier and scruffy, and he's got a beard and he wears glasses and stuff, I think was primarily once his personality started coming through in the story. He's very witty, he's very warm and friendly, he's very cultured, uh, intelligent, well-read, and so a kind of a cold-blooded reptilian dinosaur with wings was just not going to cut it. So I think once I kind of had some of those adjectives in mind, describing Graham the dragon in the book, then I kind of knew what his physical attributes would start to look like, and I kind of just went from there. I wrote and illustrated Kenny and the Dragon. I get pleasure and face challenges, obviously, on both parts. I've been drawing a lot longer professionally than I have been writing stories, but I've always loved coming up with stories and creating stories. I think for me the most thrilling part of it is kind of taking the two halves and creating a single book. I think creating a book and fabricating an entire story that unfolds to the reader in pictures and words is really the most fulfilling thing to me. I think that's probably why I started out doing picture books for younger readers, because they're so visually driven. You know, we got to put a lot of art in the Spiderwick Chronicles book. That meant a lot to me. That meant a lot to a lot of readers. And it was something I kind of wanted to carry on in Kenny and the Dragon, I thought of books that I loved reading around the same age as a kid, books like Charlotte's Web and Stuart Little. They had pictures scattered throughout, and I wanted to be able to capture that same kind of feeling and mood in this sort of tale. My daughter has inspired me a lot of ways. First and foremost, one of the things that, that I think is just, gosh, I'm going to sound like that lame parent that's always just like, you, you won't know unless you have kids, but... I love reading to kids. I read to kids all the time. When we've been touring for Spiderwick books, I toured before Spiderwick was Spider on the Fly and read to lots of kids all over the world at this point. And I love reading to a group of kids or a small group of kids. But there is something that is truly just an awesome, magical feeling when my daughter toddles up to me and hands me a book and then plops down in my lap to be read to. It took me back to when my mom would read to me as a kid, whether it was just on a rainy afternoon or lying in bed getting ready to go to sleep at night. So I've always tried to be mindful of the types of stories that I've told with a nod to the reader who's reading it, whether it be a teacher, a librarian, or a parent. And I think with Sophia, it's kind of reinforced that kind of philosophy in the books that I've made and then moving forward to the next books that I want to create so that hopefully the adults that are reading and sharing the story with the child will actually be entertained as well.
My new projects that I have in the works, I actually have a couple projects. We're finishing up the Spiderwick Chronicles and the sequel Beyond the Spiderwick Chronicles with Holly. Um, the next book in the trilogy is A Giant Problem, which comes out in September, and then we'll release the third and final Spiderwick book next year, titled The Worm King. After that, my wife and I have actually created a silly little set of nonsensical books about a little space elf named Mino, and those will be out next year. I hope kids like them. I hope adults like them. They're absolutely gibberish. I mean, they're kind of like a silly little cartoon contained in a book, but we had a lot of fun doing them. And after that, I'm beginning a new series of books. We don't quite have the final title yet, but it's going to be based on a futuristic world with robots and aliens and spaceships and lots of science fictiony things like that, and I'm terribly excited about it. I've been working feverishly on the story and, and the artwork, and I can't wait to share it with everybody.